Hello to everyone watching our video mass from St. David's Church. Uh, if you haven't heard already, uh, I'm glad to report that next Sunday, October the 4th, we will resume uh, live worship here in the church at both 8 o'clock and 10 o'clock. Uh, so we'll be here on time uh, for the ribbon cutting ceremony. Uh, and we will require, of course, that you uh, wear a mask. And if you don't have some, we have some at the church. And also, uh, to uh, please sign in so we know the, who was here for that particular service. Um, all the other announcements, of course, are in our weekly bulletin, so uh, uh, you can please take note of what's going on here uh, from time to time, uh, at least in the next few months. With that being said, uh, again, a special thank you to uh, Bob Domain, our videographer, who will continue to uh, take the 10 o'clock Mass uh, uh, for the near future uh, and broadcast it uh, out uh, to the public later in the afternoon. Uh, and to our singers and those who continue to support the life and witness of our church uh, during these uh, days. That being said, we now uh, open uh, with our opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, blessed be his kingdom, kingdom, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, or deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not left you with our whole heart. We have not left our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we repent. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. power, chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace, that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. What do you mean by repeating this proverb concerning the land of Israel? The parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, says the Lord God, this proverb shall no more be used by you in Israel. Know that all lives are mine, the life of the parent, as well as the life of the child, is mine. It is only the person who sins that shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life, because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed. They shall surely live. They shall not die. Yet the house of Israel says, The way of the Lord is unfair. O house of Israel, are my ways unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? Therefore, I will judge you. O house of Israel, all of you, according to your ways, says the Lord God, repent and turn from all your transgressions. Otherwise, iniquity will be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions that you have committed against me, 
and get yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. Why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure in the death of anyone, says the Lord God. Turn then and live. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, 
though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus said to them, I will also ask you one question. If you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. Did the baptism of John come from heaven, or was it of human origin? And they argued with one another. If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say of human origin, we are afraid of the crowd, for all regard John as a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And he said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I am doing these things. What do you think? A man had two sons. He went to the first and said, Son, go and work in the vineyard today. He answered, I will not. But later he changed his mind and went. The father went to the second and said the same. He answered, I go, sir. But he did not go. Which of the two did the will of his father? They said the first. Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going into the kingdom of God ahead of you. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him, but the tax collectors and the prostitutes believed him. And even after you saw it, you did not change your minds and believe him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As a youngster, growing up, I used to spend parts of my summers on my grandparents' farm, uh, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Um, and even now, I enjoy uh, the home landscaping uh, and gardening, which uh, uh, this uh, pandemic has given us a little more time to do such things, uh, working around the, the beautiful sunshine and the, the rains that come our ways uh, during this time of year. Um, but you know what? Um, in this uh, gospel reading today, uh, Jesus uh, tells a story about the two sons, of course the one who said, yes, I'll go, and didn't go, and the one who said, I'm not going, out to the vineyard, and then he did go, he changed his mind. Well, you know what, um, who are God's children? 
And what is our response to God when he asks us to go somewhere, do something in his name? Well, uh, we could put it this way, uh, how do we show our faith? Well, the parable uh, tells us uh, that uh, when we do the will of the Father, uh, then it's going to be productive. Uh, hopefully, you sow good seeds uh, and produce good fruit in the long run. Uh, and there's always time, of course, uh, to uh, change our minds if we say no or decline the offer and get back on the right track and do what the Lord wants us to do. So as Jesus said, uh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven. Well, uh, another story. Um, there were uh, uh, a couple uh, who, one had a doctor of uh, ministry, a doctor of divinity, uh, he was a preacher and a pastor, one who was um, uh, a musician, a, I'm sorry, a physician, and had a doctor uh, of a medicine. Uh, and so when everybody uh, called uh, on the phone and they asked for Dr. Johnson, uh, she would say, well, do you want the doctor uh, who practices or the one who preaches? <laughs> well, do we practice what we preach? Well, Jesus criticized the religious leaders uh, of the day, uh, for they did not practice what they preached. Uh, they claimed to obey God, uh, but uh, their actions denied that he had any place in their hearts at all. Um, they claimed to be longing for the Messiah and praise his name, but when he came along, uh, they uh, totally ignored him and would not have him be a part of their lives. Uh, they claimed to be obedient to God, but yet they were living under this uh, disillusion uh, of, of, of that, uh, because uh, they were uh, exalted physicians, okay, and there are many religious works, they thought that was going to be good enough to get them into heaven and get right with God. But we're taking more than that, take a right faith to follow Jesus as their Lord uh, and Savior. And so Jesus says, even the prostitutes and the tax collectors are going to get into heaven before you do. So today's reading is tell us that no matter what uh, we've done in the past or left undone, uh, it's what we do now that really matters in the eyes of the Lord. Uh, it's a message of healing and peace despite past mistakes. And so again, the question is raised, that can we change? Well, um, some psychologists uh, and sociologists uh, have um, uh, theorized that by the time we're 30 years of age, we're pretty much set in our tracks. Um, and uh, you know what? Maybe, uh, you know what? Uh, there is room for change after that. Uh, but maybe uh, we are in some ways uh, molded uh, by a certain age and time. But you know what? In God's kingdom, there's always room uh, for improvement. Uh, and then, of course, there were those who agreed with the law in Jesus' day, all right, but followed, didn't follow it. Uh, and failed to keep it, and they didn't recognize that God is more than just law, too. Uh, God wanted them to go into the world and preach the good news of the kingdom, uh, preaching uh, the message of forgiveness and love, serving in the vineyard, uh, bringing the message of salvation and love and hope and harvesting souls, okay, for God's kingdom. I think some of the Jews at first thought that Jesus would, um, you know, be in line with their ways and their traditions. After all, he was a Jew. But uh, in their minds, they were already obeying God. So they thought, well, you know what? What else can we do in order to get saved? Okay? Well, Jesus was accusing, of course, of them of being unwilling and unrepentant. And the Pharisees didn't want to upset people either by saying that uh, John the Baptist was, uh, you know, a sort of bogus uh, preacher uh, or not legit. Uh, and at the same time, you know what? They didn't want to agree to the challenging lifestyle uh, and the demands that John the Baptist preached about. Kind of like the Pharisees, you know, the Pharisees are kind of like the, you know, the parents, you know, who don't want to always deal with the, the demands of the children, okay? Uh, the children argue with the parents, oh, we, want to go to, we want to go to Disney World this weekend, you know? And it's uh, 10 o'clock at night uh, and on a Friday, and the parent doesn't want to deal with it at that point in time. Well, you know what? Uh, because in the first century Palestine, you didn't openly disobey your father or your parents, all right? But on the other hand, you know what? Uh, we see the behavior of this uh, the first son kind of shocking. Yes, I'll go to the vineyard, and then he doesn't do it, okay? Uh, so a parent, of course, owes children three things, as we know. Example, example, example. Um, and yet, uh, you know what, we find all sorts of excuses uh, for our bad behavior in the Lord's sight. Blaming other people for our problems. But we've got enough problems in society today. We can't blame TV uh, or our past or our parents or whatever uh, disobedient children we may have. Uh, for the, um, you know, for the woes that we experience, all right? Um, we are Christians and we preach and uh, practice a message of love uh, and joy uh, and peace. Of course, the bottom line is that we can no longer make excuses 
uh, for our own sins. You know, uh, how many times have we made a New York New Year's resolution uh, without really uh, fulfilling it? How did uh, gyms make their money? Well, people, they join a gym in January and they go maybe three or four times and then all of a sudden they give up and they say, okay, well, you know what? I put that money into this, uh, uh, you know, uh, this adventure and yet I have to wait till next January to start over again. Well, what, you know, what happens when we don't keep our promises uh, to God? Well, God still loves us and forgives us. How many times should we forgive our brother? Seven? No, nope. Jesus said 70 times seven, infinite number of times. So hopefully we're not like uh, the tax collectors or the Pharisees that are just mere uh, weekend warriors. We go the distance. And of course, everybody thinks of changing humanity, but uh, we have to change ourselves first and foremost. And the bad news is that we can no longer blame our circumstances or parents or cultures or anyone else uh, for the uh, excuses we make. You know what? Look at Moses, okay? He started out as an abandoned baby and became this great leader uh, of the Jewish people. Look at David. He started out as a shepherd boy and became a great king. Or Judas, who started out um, as, you know, a faithful follower of Jesus, but then oh, disobeyed Jesus, turned him in as a traitor, and then went off and took his own life. Or St. Paul, who, known as Saul, was killing and persecuting Christians, but ended up becoming a great missionary and preacher of the gospel that he did. Well, the list goes on. Sometimes, uh, you know, we in the church are guilty of uh, getting people started and putting them on the right track, but maybe not seeing them, you know, the entire distance, helping them to get to the finish. And Jesus needs finishers, people that go the distance. And too often, you know what, uh, you know what, as Christians we burn out. Some people would drop off, fade away, you know, um, fall off the radar, so to speak. But of course, it's not how you start, as we know, it's where you finish. And oftentimes, we need second wind. When life gets tough as it will, we, maybe we need to give up, uh, not give up, but to give up those uh, false uh, assumptions uh, and uh, desires and passions which uh, mislead us, but stay on the same track. And only do we go uh, to a place where God will welcome us into his heavenly kingdom. Sometimes, uh, you know what, uh, we need the second wind. We need to recapture the excitement or the energy or the enthusiasm maybe we had at some time earlier on. Sometimes maybe we're like the first brother, we know all the right answers, we hang up with the right people, but we forget what Jesus has asked us to do. Maybe we need to be reminded that, uh, you know, we need to take the good news uh, of our Lord to restore our relationships because so much work needs to be done. And yet sometimes we're like the second brother. Maybe we made poor choices in life, uh, ignored the dictates of the gospel or what God wants us to do. Maybe we don't feel like we deserve anything good, and yet we know what God uh, has uh, asked us to do great things for his kingdom. So maybe we don't use a sacrament of confession, but we know that uh, through confession, you know, what our deep longings, okay, um, you know, still count, believing and acting uh, and listening to the will of God. And of course, that's what we need to do sometimes too, just listen. We don't learn much by talking all the time, but we learn much by listening. And even though somebody comes to the party late, there's always still a seat at the table. Because as Jesus said last week in the gospel, the last shall be first, and the first shall be last. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, like right one, who shall be God who can try, begotten of God, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us, our salvation became the King of heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a part of the earth and that was his name. For our sake, he was crucified and not crucified. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose to ten and in the morning of his scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated in the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will come back to the end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Lord, and the Lord of life. We put so Jesus from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son, and the Lord of life.
Yes, yes, so we can talk about it. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge the baptism of the saints. We look to the resurrection of the dead. We look to the resurrection of the dead. We look to the Amen. Amen. Our prayers of the people are guided by Form 3, page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Every holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Our Lord, 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 Lord. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let the mind of the we praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come here and share your Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Peter, our bishop, Stephen, our priest. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Diocese of Narimbi, Uganda, Abye, South Sudan, and Accra, West Africa. I ask your prayers for Tanya Lee, Gabrielle Camino, Lucy Smith, Jean Champagne, Roxanne Carty, Ray Walter, Erica Belden, and Bonnie Mershon on their birthday this week. For Yvonne and Lincoln Elliott, and for Dorette and Ken Barnett on their wedding anniversary, and for our expectant mother, Maoli. I ask your prayers for the departed, especially all victims of violence, terrorism, natural disasters, and COVID-19. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy, in this time of uncertainty and distress. Sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your holy comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. 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 May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Always with you. Remember me, O Lord, and pour your grace into my mouth and heart, that my words may be pleasing in your sight. Hallelujah.
you're the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to do life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, join in our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Thanks to O God for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate in the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, but when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrament that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection unto your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. David our patron, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are called to say, our Father, who art in heaven, 
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have a gracious day set at us as a living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of body and blood. Send us down to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of our heart. Christ, God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the nation, and all mankind, peace and concord, and bless his service, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
Thank you. 